G'day guys, how you going? Um, today we're going to be working on this custom built trailer that a, a guy's, one of my customers has, has brought in. Uh, it's built, the, the trailer itself is a Lodestar trailer, it's built in, in Perth here. It's got um, off-road suspension on it, so it's a pretty hardcore unit. I've got a, a Lodestar trailer for work that I've had since 2005 and yeah, it's been, been great. Um, so he's added stuff you know, to it as he's gone along, like he's got a you know outboard engine um, holder at the front here, and he's got you know his big box, at, you know, for a st storage box at the front. Um, yeah, put the canopy on. Um, he spent a lot of money with Drifter Campers, got a, quite a bit of their equipment. Um, they're a company over in Gloucester, New South Wales. They do some awesome four-wheel driving um, accessories and camping stuff. He's got, you know, the um, the big awning up there that goes all the way around, and also he's got um, some kitchen uh, kitchen in there and a drawer out the back. Now they don't use uh, bowl bearings and stuff on a lot of their stuff, so especially in WA when you've got sand flicking in the back, you know, Lansing when it's really blowy or something, when you slide it out, it, it, you know, the bearings don't get in there, so you can just hose it all out and it's all all back to good again um, he's got a dual hot water system but he just wants me to put a couple of bells and whistles on it one of them is uh, the gas system so we've got a bayonet at the front bayonet at the back the one at the front probably for the hot water system the one at the back is for a uh, barbecue or something like that so that'll be good and also he's got no way of storing water except from jerry cans and that gets you know a bit old after a while so he's bought a couple of Dun & Watson um, 80 litre water tanks that he's asked me to fit. Um, I thought you could just do it yourself mate, you're a bit, you know, you're a bit handy and stuff like that but I can see why now there's brake cables that we've got to try and avoid and stuff so it's going to be quite a difficult job to get them up, up in there. And I'm probably going to put a pump or something in here, out the front here, um, that the auto electrician can connect up um, so you know he can get all that working with the jorker and stuff like that. So anyway. I'll keep you updated during the build and I'll show you the finished finished product anyway. So anyway, thanks for watching and um, we'll yeah, I'll keep you updated. Thanks guys. Okay guys, all sorted. Now the easiest part of this build was the gas side of things. So all we've done is put a gas regulator towards the rear of the camper, right next to where the you know the 4.5 kg bottle is. Okay, we put a bayonet on the back of it to run a stove or something later later on in the kitchen and then we've run the gas main sort of up and underneath the, the you know the, the top of this camper here where it's out of the way so the bushes can't get to it or everything and then stuck another bayonet out the front for the dual hot water system with the all-important dust plug. Now the next thing is the water tanks. They were a bit more difficult. Now when we fitted the rear tank we got all the fittings on there fitted the rear tank we noticed that it was just too close to the axle and it wouldn't fit so we had to trim the bike holder at the back there we had to trim about 50 50 mil off that on a bit of an angle and that gave us about another 50 mil so it's a good distance away from the axle now as the axle you know moves up and down near the water tank so once that was done we had to move on to the front tank now the front tank runs front to back because we had the brake cables and it just wouldn't fit width wise now each one of these um dun and watson water tanks have five holes either side so we have used you know the five bolts that go all the way up through the checker plate to bolt that in place so we, we bolted the back one in place now the front one we just sort of got in place and then we ran all the hoses so there's two filler hoses two breather hoses and two suction hoses and all those sort of fed up together and went along the top of the front tank so it kept it protected up out of the way ran along once it was all in position then we could jack it up and tighten it up and leave it once in place so it was quite hard to get the holes right too because that, because of the drift of drawers that go in and out. We just didn't want to make sure that we you know bring it right right up where the where the bolt comes through where the draw runners are because that would be a, a bit annoying. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but this is a three-way valve. So this one here from the front tank, this is from the back tank, and then they can turn it over. This is what they it's what they have on all the Jayco caravans you know so you can empty your empty your front one first or your back one or whatever whatever you decide to to do on the day so that's nice and tucked out and quite easy to reach too okay so now when it came to the filler points of where to fill the tanks up we had a couple of options i was thinking of maybe putting it on the side of this um, toolbox on the front but sort of spaces at a premium so if you're going to fill up with your barbecue that, that chews up a bit of room and then I noticed there was a gap in between the, you know, the front of the trailer and this toolbox. And when I put the filler in place here, it fitted all right. So then all I had to do is make up this bracket on the side, a couple of holes in it here, and then that is all sicker flexed, um, you know, these in there with the screws. And then we've pot riveted on the on the side here. I made up a little plaque to say uh, front and back to know which which tank is what and how you're filling it up. And that means all those 
all the breather hoses and, and the filler hoses can all run down in between nice smooth and then on top of the main main tank so it's just uh, very easy to fill as well now as you can see I don't know if you can notice but I've, I've left it on a bit of an angle backwards that way um, the reason for that is I wanted to get a switch I don't know if you can see it but there's a switch just here and that's to turn the pump on and off it's a little waterproof switch there so he can turn it on so after you've you know finished hooking up your trailer or doing a bit of work um, I've also install a little tap down here so when you when you're finished you can just wash your hands quickly with a bit of soap and turn it off you know and, and get on your way again so yeah it's sort of worked out pretty easy really easy to take off and you know they're all they're all lockable and stuff like that so yeah pretty happy with how that's turned out and you're probably wondering what is this uh, here so this is uh this is what they call the quick release water fitting i'll just take that off here and so a fitting can go into that, so it's, there's pressure on it at the moment, so a fitting can go into that, and that's the fitting that we use with a hose barb on it, and that goes straight up into the jewel car, and then it can start running, you know, so it sucks the water out of the tank through the pump and puts out the jewel car, but I'll show you how, to, how we set that up in a minute. Okay, I'll just show you now how easy it is to hook up the jewel car to the new system that we've uh, installed. Make sure that the, um, the pump switch is on down here. You check by just turning the tap on, okay, so that's all good to go. Grab the Joker hot tap, okay. Um, he's going to make up a bracket or something here. He's, I think he's bought. There's, there's a new one on the market now that, that sort of you can it, it's a, you can pop it in and lock it in there with a with a you know even a padlock and stuff, so it's not permanently fixed anymore, which is a great idea. So I'll just hang it over the top. That'll be fine for the moment. Just grab your gas your gas hose, okay. Just remove your uh, your dust plug. Pop that out. Pop the hose in, okay. Now this hose is live now, okay, but no gas will come out because of the quick release. That just pops onto the bottom, okay, slide, slide on like that, okay. Then you get your, uh, this is just a bit of 8mm hose I got from Bunnings. You can get this, you can get this hose um, connector here at Bunnings, this is an 8mm connector. Okay, they're great for the for the jokers to go on 8mm hose. And then we've got the barb fitting, okay. So you always put that on first, the cold clips on like that. And then down here, you just pop off the little stopper there so you can get access to that. Now before you plug that in, get your shower ready. So to dual shower, I haven't set it up properly, but anyway, you'll get it, the understanding. That goes onto the hot side of things. Like that clips on. So that's the hot feed. You've got your shower there. Okay, got that light. Alright, so if it all works correctly, when I plug this in. It'll start pushing water through the Julka, okay, and it should all start firing up. So we'll see how it goes. Yep, so she's fired up and she stopped because the little switch down here is off. So I've turned that on. The water starts coming out. Plenty of flow. Now 32, 33, 34. So hot enough to have a shower now. So you get up to nearly 40 degrees. So that's how easy it is. Shut it off. Hot water system turns off and back on again. And you can see inside the little Tropper G flow meter, we're counting down the litres so your wife can know, like, hey, you know, you can use 40 litres tonight, baby, because we've got plenty left, so go for it. Um, I know, really good setup. I'll show you how easy it is to pack up as well. So we'll just turn that off. Okay. Just unplug the, the cold line that just releases the pressure on it. Okay, then you can unplug the hot. Okay, cool. Now if you ever have it like that, there's, you can also, there's the, the Joker pump as well. So you can plug that into the cold line, chuck that into a stream, okay, turn this pump on, and then you can pump water from a stream that's probably not worth drinking. You wouldn't want to drink it, but it's fine to have a shower. And then you can have a good, you know, good shower for as long as you like, use plenty of water. Um, so that's, that's a really good option for this as well. But anyway. I'll take the gas off, put the dust plug back on, little twist, roll the hose up, like so, jolt her off, give it a shake, and you can chuck it back in the box. So, success, it's gone well. Okay, would you like to see the pump setup? Sure you do, I'll just show you. Here it is, so it's got the Shore Flow pump, okay, they're, they're a great great little unit, very quiet, um, been really happy with these. Now, so here's a suction line that comes through, 
Okay, and that goes from the two tanks. Then it comes up over here. You've got the um, pre-filter, which takes out all the debris before it gets into the pump, really protects it. And then it jumps up to the mains pressure, or you know, the higher pressure John Guest fittings. And that rolls around here. You can see here's the, the, the top of G flow, flow meter. It's got the little propeller inside that. So it's good that this, um, this protects that as well. And then it heads off, it's got a T. One goes up to the quick release fitting for the Julka. Okay, and the other one goes down, that's it for that hose tap that um, I showed you before. Now this is all the back end of the switch, you can see here. Okay, the switch is on the other side to turn it off. It's a nice waterproof switch. And then it's got the, um, you know, all the wiring loom and everything um, connected into that for the, the switch and also the top of G flow meter to supply power for that. And then it heads into this conduit that goes up outside the toolbox here, nicely sealed, and then up under there. And that goes into the main bit of the trailer and that's where the top of G flow meter is installed. So then if I turn the tap on, it'll fire up and it will start counting down and tell you how many litres is left. So great way of doing it. So that just, just runs, runs down. I think, I think these things are, um, are so important if you're, if you're off camping, you know, because you're always struggling with the water. You know, are you going to have enough when you're, when you're showering and stuff? And you'd hate on the, you know, the last few days, um, you say to your wife, oh, take it easy on the water. And when you get home, you might have 80, 90 left where she could have gone nuts and uh, had a really long shower and really enjoyed it. But um, yeah, it's just a great, great way of doing it, especially if you've got two tanks, you know, it's great to know down to the litre how many, how many litres you got left. And then you can see at the end of the, uh, end of the where, where it comes out of the pump, out of the wiring loom, I've got an Anderson plug and the all important fuse. Now the Anderson plug are really good because you can just buy one of those um, battery boxes and most of them have this, you can plug it straight in and you're good to go, okay? You can put it back in your house, charge it, you know, everything fuse is really important too now you probably look at all this and go wow that's a really neat job you've done ben i actually didn't do it um i'd love to figure out how how to do all this stuff with with you know soldering wires and fuses and all that stuff but i went down to a mate of mine daryl at frostfield auto electrics and i drew him a little diagram i said i want to switch up here i want the pump here on top of has to you have power to it and the switch has to would like a light on it and then turn on with the pump and blow I drew it all for him how long it had, had to be and i said about 500 with a nice uh you know, anderson plug on the end of it and then the next day I came back and he'd give me this it just looks amazing uh, great wiring loom now i'm not sure if he did it or he just told one of his guys they're all great out there but if you want any of this stuff done draw him a diagram drop it off and then um, he'll he'll sort it out for you so yeah daryl forestwood auto electrics don't forget him he's great at all this sort of stuff so if you've been out camping with the family and you think yeah some of these pain points would be good to iron out then give us a call especially if you live in wa happy to help guys thanks for watching really appreciate it and see you on the next video